In a post-apocalyptic world, a young man faces dangerous gangs and bizarre monsters to save his best friend and stop her from being devoured by zombies. Today we're going to recap the story of the first season of the 2019 series, Daybreak. In the city of Glendale, California, Josh Wheeler tries to survive in a world where almost everyone over the age of 18 has turned into ghoulies, an evolved species of zombie. Since this catastrophe happened, all the young people have become completely free and have started looting houses and establishments in order to survive. As well as humans, animals have also mutated and are becoming increasingly frightening. It's been six months since the biological nuclear bombs exploded and some tribes have been created with the aim of occupying the territory. Some of them are more dangerous than the ghoulies. One day, while venturing around the city on his skateboard, Josh hears a girl's cry and decides to go into the church to help her. When he gets there, he finds a young girl trapped inside a trunk and surrounded by the golf team from his old school. Believing that this is Sam, his best friend, Josh decides to confront the bullies and draws his sword to attack them. When he sees that the young man is armed, Terry begins to mock him and says that he will never be able to defeat them alone. Josh then becomes furious and plans to cut off his enemy's finger with his sword. However, he misses the target and his katana is stuck in the man's hand. Seeing that their leader has been attacked, all the other gang members set out to attack him, but Josh manages to defeat them and takes Terry hostage. While fighting the delinquents, the young man asks Sam to run away and is surprised to discover that the person locked in the trunk is his former neighbor, Angelica. Frustrated at not having found Sam even after six months of searching, the young man frees Terry and leaves. Not knowing where to go, Angelica decides to follow him and they both come across a samurai. Josh immediately grabs his katana to face his new enemy, but soon discovers that the guy is Wesley, a member of the school's American soccer team and a fan of old movies. Now, the player calls himself a pacifist and claims to be making amends for the crimes he committed in his past life. When he finds out that Josh is looking for Sam, Wesley reveals that he's heard rumors that she's been seen around the city shopping mall. A few kilometers away, there's Turbo's gang, who have a habit of putting their prisoners through a talent show. If the boss doesn't like the music, a trap door opens and the person is thrown into an enclosure full of ghoulies. Luckily, the singer manages to escape and tries to run away, but Turbo doesn't give up chasing him and eliminates him with the help of a missile. He then orders his group to join the golf team to help them hunt down Josh. Before leaving for the mall, he decides to stop by his apartment to pick up some supplies and Angelica asks him how he can be sure that Sam is alive. Then Josh says that on the day the bombs exploded, Sam left a post-it note for his friend asking where he was. Since he's completely in love with the girl, Josh promised he wouldn't give up until he found her and he's been keeping his promise ever since. Suddenly, the trio hears the noise of vehicles approaching and, when they reach the young man's apartment, they start throwing stones at the window. In an attempt to defend themselves, the trio return the attack and throw blood bags at the enemy army. Just then, dozens of ghoulies attack the vandals who were trying to capture Josh. Then, immediately, the tribes have to retreat and flee at the sight of several of their partners being devoured. Meanwhile, the three young people take the opportunity to escape through the back door and split up to get to the mall. Even after the attack, Josh continues to be pursued and tries to throw off his enemies while Wesley and Angelica open the establishment. Just then, a ghoulie approaches to devour them, but Josh appears just in time and plunges his sword into the woman's back. When she realizes she's been hurt, she quickly runs away and then Baron Triumph appears. No one knows the biker's true identity, but everyone is scared of him. Luckily, when the villain approaches and removes his mask, the youngsters realize that this is a cheap imitation of the biker. Cleverly, Eli pretends to be Baron Triumph in order to ward off the gangs and move around the city without the risk of being caught. That's how he managed to take over the entire mall without anyone trying to invade his space. The problem begins when the real Baron Triumph shows up and Eli immediately opens up the mall so that he and the other teenagers can hide. While the biker tries to destroy the gates, the group runs for cover and ends up being tricked by Eli, who traps Josh and Angelica inside one of the stores. The young man doesn't want to share his mall with anyone else, so he tries to get rid of the visitors. However, Wesley is still outside and is trying to convince Eli to free his friends. As he has decided to become a pacifist, the young man cannot attack him and tries to resolve the situation amicably. Meanwhile, Josh and Angelica remain imprisoned and soon discover that there is a man-eating witch in there with them. Together, they lure the monster to another store and manage to trap it. While trying to talk to the creature, Josh realizes that it's his old biology teacher. Unlike the other ghoulies, Miss Crumble can communicate normally, despite having lost her sanity. When she hears Josh talking about getting out of that ward, the woman says she can help him. At this point, she shifts her jaw and opens a giant mouth. 
she then orders Josh to stick his arm inside her and take the key. After freeing himself, he intends to leave the mall to continue looking for Sam, but when he opens the door, he ends up being attacked by the same woman he struck with his sword. Terrified, Angelica runs for help and, soon after, Eli appears and eliminates the ghoulies before Josh can be attacked. However, he's only willing to help because Baron Triumph is trying to break in and Eli needs the young man's help to stop him. But in the end, when the biker manages to open the elevator, it's Miss Crumble who attacks him and manages to scare him to the point of making him run away. After the danger is over, Eli tastes his own poison and ends up being locked up, just as he intended to do to Josh and his friends. Wesley knows that this guy can't be trusted, so he decides to keep him away so as not to risk being attacked during the night. Meanwhile, Josh goes to the bathroom and discovers that he has been bitten. In an attempt not to turn into a monster, he decides to cut off his own arm and uses his sword to do the job. Once again, he misses his target and ends up cutting off his own finger. When she hears her friend's screams, Angelica goes to check what's going on and Josh discovers that, unlike zombies, ghoulies don't infect their victims. Finally, the witch is able to eat human flesh and prepares a finger sandwich. But before she can devour it, a crow appears and steals her breakfast. After losing a limb, Josh catches an infection that begins to spread throughout his body. Even so, he remains determined to go out and look for Sam, but is betrayed by his own body and collapses before he even leaves the mall. When he wakes up, Josh realizes that he is lying on a bed inside a furniture store and finds that his friends have gone out to get antibiotics for him. Suddenly, Crumble appears at his side and claims to be very hungry. At this point, the woman attacks him and uses a strap to tie him to the bed. After a few minutes on the road, Angelica and Wesley finally arrive at the pharmacy and the girl explodes the cupboard to get the medicines. Meanwhile, Josh is unconscious and still tied up while Crumble thinks of a way to feed herself without having to eliminate him. Then, seeing some worms on a tray, the woman has an idea and dips the young man's hand into a basin full of those maggots. After picking up their medicine, Wesley and Angelica are preparing to return to the mall when they realize that the pharmacy is surrounded by ghoulies. They immediately prepare to fight, but are surprised to discover that someone is attacking the creatures. After leaving the store, they come across the Chirmazans, a group of young women who have banded together to survive the apocalypse. Demi, the gang leader, is an old friend of Angelica's and invites her to join her gang, but the girl refuses. On the way back, she reveals to Wesley that she plans to create her own tribe and, to do so, they need to get Josh to give up looking for his beloved. After convincing Wesley that this is the best option to prevent his friend from being devoured by the ghoulies, Angelica decides to fake Sam's elimination. When he wakes up, Josh is surprised that he is still alive and thanks Crumble for not eating him. Then the ghoulie reveals that she used the worms to consume the bacteria around his finger in order to prevent the infection from spreading. This way, as well as helping the young man to survive, it can feed on the necrotic tissue that the larvae have consumed. That morning, when he meets up with his friends again, Josh receives the terrible news that Sam has perished and goes into despair. Since she had a brooch identical to the girls, all Angelica had to do was find the body of a blonde woman and leave her face disfigured so that Josh couldn't recognize her. Then, when he saw the brooch on her clothes, the young man believed that it was Sam and Angelica was able to form her long-dreamed-of tribe. Believing that Baron Triumph is behind Sam's perishment, Josh decides to go after him for revenge and Wesley accompanies him. Feeling guilty for deceiving his friend, the swordsman intends to stop him from committing a crime unjustly and tries to lose Josh so that he doesn't find the biker. On the pretext that they are being chased by ghoulies, Wesley has him run all over the city until they are finally surrounded by a gang. Suddenly, a talking teddy bear approaches and Larry decides to pick it up. In doing so, he accidentally triggers a device that causes an explosion. At that moment, his head is ripped off and everyone flees when they realize the presence of Baron Triumph. When he is hit, Josh loses consciousness and, when he wakes up, he realizes that he is inside a factory. Wesley is trapped in another cage and is relieved to discover that his friend had a master key stored inside his fake finger. After freeing himself, the young man realizes that his key has been broken and asks for the help of a girl who works in the factory to find the place where the biker hides the keys. While looking for a way to free his friend, Josh comes across Jaden Hoyles, a young man from his school, and at that moment realizes that Baron Triumph is coming. He immediately goes into hiding and is surprised when the most dangerous villain in that post-apocalyptic world removes his mask, because he finds out that this guy is the principal of his school. Worse than that, the young man discovers that Michael feeds on human flesh and Jaden would be his next meal if Josh couldn't distract the director to free him. The young man then knocks him down and runs off to hide. Michael quickly goes after him, but Josh manages to surround the cannibal. But instead of eliminating him, 
The young man just steals his bunch of keys and locks the director inside a cereal making machine. After that, he frees all the prisoners and takes them to the mall to become new members of his tribe. Turbo was the only one who wasn't released and remained abandoned in the factory until Wesley returned to free him. During high school, the two became a couple, but ended their relationship when Turbo became a tyrant. After reminiscing about old times, the man asks Wesley to eliminate Josh and says that if the young man doesn't, he will invade the mall and eliminate all the survivors. Before returning to the rest of the group, Wesley finds a hidden camera in the factory and realizes that Eli was spying. Furious, he drags the young man out of the building and uses a radio to attract the ghoulies, but seconds before Eli is devoured, Wesley pulls him back inside. Now that he knows his life will be at risk if Josh isn't eliminated, Eli tries to eliminate him in all sorts of ways, but Wesley is always on the lookout to save his friend. However, after a long conversation about the future of all the members of that tribe, they both came to the conclusion that eliminating Josh was the noblest thing to do, as they would be saving the rest of the group. So, while everyone is preparing for a celebratory ball, the pair poison the crown, believing that Josh will be elected king of the party. During the event, Wesley offers to be the DJ and, at the end of the celebration, the votes for the future king are closed. It's only a few minutes before the result is revealed and Wesley panics. After a long thought, the pacifist decides to tell Josh the truth and reveals that he loves Turbo. He says that the two had a relationship, but split up after, overcome by jealousy, the man eliminated all the guys who approached Wesley. However, Josh was wearing headphones and didn't hear his friend's confession. Just then, the name of the king of the party is announced and Wesley is surprised to discover that he was the most voted for. So the young man takes to the stage already accepting his fate, but before he is crowned, he decides to tell everyone the truth. At that moment, Wesley reveals that Turbo and his tribe are on their way and claims to have a plan for them to defend themselves. So when the lights go out and the rival gang invades the mall, Josh and his friends come out of hiding and set up an ambush to surround their enemies. In the end, no one was hurt, but the invaders took a large amount of food, leaving Wesley's friends without supplies. After discovering the betrayal, Josh decides to arrest Wesley and Eli because he realizes that they can't be trusted. The young man knows that Turbo will never leave him alone, so he joins the rest of the gang to think of a strategy to get rid of him for good. Upon hearing this, Karen, one of the young women who was rescued from the factory, decides to help him and takes the young man to Arya Killigan's hideout. The gamer and her friends form a combat unit and together they have become one of the most powerful tribes in California. Meanwhile, Angelica and Crumble decide to pay a visit to feed the principal and the girl discovers that the reason Michael ran away when he saw the witch in the mall was because he thought she was eliminated. Before the apocalypse, he had a romantic relationship with Miss Crumble and, when he sees her, the woman's wild instincts are aroused. Suddenly, she starts chasing Angelica and tries to devour her. Luckily, the girl manages to escape and locks herself in the bathroom. That night, Arya and her group go after Turbo, but they all end up being captured. Before destroying the last camera, the man leaves a message for Josh and, when he analyzes the image of the people in the background of the video, the young man realizes that Sam is among them. Hours later, Angelica decides to leave that bathroom and, on opening the door, realizes that Crumble is not well. Desperate, the woman asks for forgiveness for having tried to attack the girl and begs her to help her, as frightening wounds are forming on her back. Concerned about her friend, Angelica takes her back to the mall and tends to her wounds, but the woman says she's not well at all. So the young woman goes to get medicine for herself and, when she meets Josh, she discovers that he already knows the whole truth. After discovering that Sam was alive, the young man put Wesley against the wall and got him to confess to faking the girl's elimination. When he learns that his best friends have tricked him, Josh kicks them out of the mall along with Eli, and Angelica decides to join the Chirmazan tribe. Discovering that the girl has left, Crumble goes after her and, after a few minutes on her bike, manages to find the headquarters of the warrior tribe. Immediately, the witch is surrounded by a group of armed women and manages to enter the hideout after saying that she is there to take part in the challenge. At that moment, she spots Angelica, but is unable to speak to her. All the newcomers are then challenged to take part in the first test, which consists of identifying the only food in the entire banquet that hasn't been poisoned. The first participants choose a dish and take a bite, but immediately run to the bathroom. Meanwhile, Crumble tries to get Angelica's attention and manages to get in touch with the girl. Together, they try to choose a food, but the teacher comes to the conclusion that all the food is poisoned and they both decide to just drink the water. In this way, they manage to move on to the next stage. In this stage, the girls have to eliminate ghoulies dressed as Santa Claus with their bare hands. After losing one of their teammates, the contestants decide to team up to capture the monsters and succeed in eliminating them. 
However, when one of them approaches Angelica, Crumble rushes to protect her and drives the creature away. Then she starts licking a pool of blood off the floor and everyone finds out who she really is. Immediately, the ghoulie is brought to trial and Demi orders the rookies to vote on whether she should live or be eliminated. In a herd effect, everyone thinks that Crumble should be eliminated, except Angelica. Instead of abandoning her friend, the girl decides to leave with her and, because of her attitude, becomes the only contestant to pass the final test. Since losing the battle against Josh, Turbo has started acting strangely and has isolated himself from all the members of his tribe. Even Mona, his faithful squire, notices that he's different. So the young woman decides to ask the principal for help and offers Michael his freedom. In return, he must return to the school and help the students restore order. Immediately, the principal returns to the school and uses the megaphone to pass on some messages to his former students. Hearing Michael's voice, Turbo is furious and goes after him. Just then, a brutal fight breaks out between Baron Triumph and Turbo and the young man manages to drive his axe into the director's body. But instead of giving up the battle, Michael returns the attack and the young man can no longer get up. At this point, the old man says that he has returned to the school to restore the code of conduct and that Turbo will be expelled for violating it. That day, Turbo was discarded along with the bodies of all the people he had eliminated, but Wesley showed up to save him. The young man then takes his ex-boyfriend to Josh's apartment, where he already has everything they need to survive. By now, Josh is about to conclude his search plan to save Sam from that school and Eli shows up with good news. The young man informs him that Baron Triumph is the new leader of Turbo's gang and that he is the one with Sam. Although he can't wait to meet Sam again, Josh is worried about what Eli might do to the rest of his tribe while he's away and decides to make a deal with him. Knowing that Eli is a collector of magic cards, Josh promises to get him a whole collection, as long as the young man promises not to expel the other young people from the tribe. Desperate to help his injured ex-boyfriend, Wesley decides to ask his old friend for help and Angelica spares no effort to rescue him. After crossing the city, she and Crumble arrive at Josh's apartment and the biology teacher uses all her medical knowledge to treat Turbo's injuries. Meanwhile, Michael works to find out why the teenagers haven't turned into ghoulies and decides to test a theory. He believes that the injection of medication that these young people took may have spared their lives, since those who didn't take the injection at school ended up dying shortly after the bomb exploded. So the director decides to prepare jellies full of immune-boosting substances for the young people who haven't taken their second and third doses to eat. That way, they can protect themselves until new vials of the injection are found. That afternoon, Eli and Josh prepare to enter the school. The plan consists of Eli using his Baron Triumph outfit to fool the students and take Josh as his prisoner. However, when the young man puts on the mask, Jaden appears and attacks him, believing him to be the director. When he discovers his true identity under that costume, the young man runs away and Josh tries to help the wounded young man. As his abdomen was punctured, Eli couldn't resist and ended up dying in his companion's arms. After eating Michael's immunity-boosting cocktail, the students start to faint and Sam goes to investigate what's going on. Then, when she enters the principal's office, she discovers that he is still eating human flesh and is keeping Barry locked in the closet to feed on his arms and legs. At that moment, the young woman discovers that Michael intends to take over Glendale, but she loses consciousness before she has a chance to react. After Eli has been eliminated, Josh decides to go ahead with his plan alone and breaks into the school dressed as Baron Triumph. After searching the place, he finds Sam and suddenly the couple are hit by an explosion. A few minutes before this catastrophe happens, Michael attacks the Chirmazan's headquarters and Angelica as one of the victims of the explosion. However, unlike the other girls in her tribe, the girl was rescued by the man because she plays a key role in his plan for domination. After he and his soldiers leave, Angelica will have to release a missile to blow up Glendale. To force her to follow his orders, the principal uses Miss Crumble as a hostage and threatens to eliminate her if she doesn't follow his orders. After leaving school, Josh and Sam return to the mall to warn the rest of the group about Michael's plans. After the explosion, they lost their ability to hear and need to communicate through writing. Upon learning of what is about to happen, Karen says that her friends must flee in order to survive, but Sam asks for their help to stop the director from carrying out his plan. Afraid of being eliminated, the tribe decides to leave and Josh is the only one who agrees to accompany them on their mission to save the city. So they decide to go and ask the Chirmazans for help and meet Wesley and Turbo on the way. It's been a few hours since the explosion and, little by little, the young people are beginning to recover their hearing. While they come up with a plan to dethrone the director, the quartet receives reinforcements and Josh has the idea of using musical instruments to attract the ghoulies. In this way, he manages to form an army to fight Michael's soldiers. During the battle, 
Josh goes to Angelica's rescue and the director escapes. The next step is to disarm the missile and for that, Angelica needs Miss Crumble's help. So Sam and Josh go looking for her and end up being surprised by the arrival of Baron Triumph. While Sam tries to distract him, Josh looks for his teacher and luckily manages to find her. Afterwards, Josh goes to help his friend and strikes the principal with his sword. Suddenly, a bizarre creature begins to emerge from inside him, but this time Josh manages to hit his target and eliminates the monster. Now that Michael is gone, the war between the students comes to an end and Crumble manages to get to the missile. However, the woman says that there is no way to disarm it, so Angelica has the idea of sending it into space so that the planet is not affected. The problem is that the shot can only be fired manually and Crumble decides to sacrifice herself to save her students. However, Angelica refuses to abandon her friend and says that she will stay by her side. Then, after saying goodbye to the girl, the teacher asks Josh and Wesley to take her to a safe place. Minutes later, the woman fires the missile and the explosion happens far away from Glendale. While Angelica grieves the perishment of her best friend, Crumble appears right next to her and surprises everyone. Now that everything has been sorted out, Josh invites Sam to join his tribe, but the girl claims to have found her own family and, alongside Mona, becomes the newest leader of the school gang. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.